this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is a video to compare two premium wireless gaming mice from Razer. The Razer Viper Ultimate, seen here in all its subtle glory, and the Razer Basilisk Ultimate. Now I've unboxed and reviewed both these mice separately, and I'll link to those videos in the description. But here I'm going to talk to you about the differences between the two, what I like and don't like about them, and why they're interesting. Now these are two very comparable mice in terms of specs. They both have 20,000 DPI, 650 IPS, 50 Gs of acceleration, and loads and loads of battery life. The Razer Viper Ultimate, seen here, has up to 70 hours of battery life. And this is an ambidextrous mouse, which as you'll see will work with both left and right-handed gamers. And it's also available to purchase with the charging dock. So note of that, You'll see it as a little charging dock, more on that in a minute. It comes with Razer's hyperspeed wireless dongle, as well as a speed flex cable. It has eight programmable buttons, which includes buttons on both sides of the mouse. And you can also get more out of that at software level, thanks to Razer's hypershift technology, which I'll go into a bit more depth on in the review. There's a DPI button on the underside, which I really don't like. But otherwise, it's an understated design, very comfortable and really nicely set up. The charging dock is almost certainly a bonus for a wireless gaming mouse because it means as long as you remember to dock it when you're not using it, you no longer need to worry about plugging it in, which is really nice because that means you don't have the faff of plugging in for charging. You can just drop it onto these pins. So there's some pins for connectivity on the underside of the mouse and on top of the charging dock. It also works as an extender for the range because you can plug the dongle into it. So that means you only need to use one USB port on your PC, which is obviously a bonus. You'll see some decent slick feet on the underside as well. But one downside might be that micro USB cable, which I know annoys a lot of people nowadays. It comes in at 74 grams. So it's not exactly lightweight, but it is lighter than the Razer Basilisk Ultimate, which weighs in at 107 grams, which I say is a mid-weight design. A significantly heavier than other wireless lightweight gaming mice I've reviewed, including the SteelSeries Aerox 3, the SteelSeries Prime, and the Glorious Model O. But it isn't the end of the world for either of these mice, because they're still very slick accurate and agile. Now you'll see on the bottom of the Viper Ultimate, you'll notice when you're plugging in the charging cable, it actually has a marked top, so you don't get it the wrong way around. It is slightly designed with a sort of run on it as well, so when you plug it in, you'll find it just slots in there. Bit fiddly though, it would be nice if it had USB-C. Now, you'll note that the Viper Ultimate has textured grips on either side, as well as two buttons on either side as well on the side. One thing that I found with it, though, is though it's a nice fit in the hand, I do feel like those side buttons are a bit too recessed and not terribly easy to press. On the underside, you have a dock for your 2.4 gigahertz dongle when not in use, so you have access to this. And you can also plug it into the charging base station and then increase the range on that, or at least have it in a more convenient place. So it's right on your desk when you need it, and as is the cable, which means you don't need to plug in two things into your PC, which is definitely a bonus. One thing I did find with this charging dock though, is it is a bit fiddly to get the mouse onto. It takes a bit of practice to learn how to do it. I found that it's just a bit of a pain to dock. Now the Razer Basilisk Ultimate is obviously on the face of it, quite a different looking mouse. This mouse has 11 programmable buttons and a different shape to it. It's designed for right-handed gamers and it has a much more sort of angry look to it. It also has other differences, including multiple RGB lighting zones that the Viper Ultimate does not. It has 14 customizable lighting zones and also has more battery life as up to 100 hours of battery life. You'll notice the large PTFE feet on the underside, as well as the 2.4 gigahertz wireless dongle that's also accessible there in much the same way. So it's tucked away down there too. Now you have 11 programmable buttons on this hardware level, and you also have the ability to adjust more within Razer's Synapse software. 
so you can add in that hyper shift for even more button presses. On the face of it, the Basilisk Ultimate is definitely the better looking of the two mice and perhaps more interesting. You have simple things like left and right click on the mouse wheel, for example. But there's also a paddle that you can add in here. It's a multi-function paddle. It basically clips into the front. It has a really interesting feel to it and the way it presses and actuates. And I find it really interesting and delightful. Also unusual. What isn't unusual is the floppy cable design from Razer that's basically the same on both mice. You have that micro USB connection. Now if you don't purchase the one with the charging dock, you do get this little extender dongle that you can put on the desk. Micro USB cable plugs into that and then you can plug the USB dongle into that. And obviously you can then remove it from there and plug it into the mouse when it needs charging. I would recommend springing for the one with the charging dock though because it makes things a lot more convenient. Now a little bit of a talk about which is my favourite. The Razer Viper Ultimate is interesting obviously because it's ambidextrous and so you have nice textured grips on both sides and these buttons on either side as well so it gives a lot of flexibility in terms of the button setup. Now usually with ambidextrous mice you have a problem where you might accidentally actuate these side buttons when you don't mean to. That's one thing I didn't find I did with this mouse which is certainly good. What I did find though is that these buttons just don't stick out enough from the side so they're not easy to press and feel when you need to. Otherwise though the mouse is really nice. The mouse wheel is quite satisfying, has some good action to it, a nice textured finish. The buttons also have good response. Both these mice have optical mouse switches which means they actuate really fast and accurately and should hold up over time and give a much better resilience versus your traditional mechanical switches and so that setup's really good there obviously this mouse is a nice symmetrical ergonomic shape to it but personally i prefer the razor basilisk ultimate which i think is a better looking mouse but more importantly a better fit for a right-handed gamer i really like the thumb rest for example the basilisk also wins for a number of other simple reasons it has a lot more programmable buttons so although you don't have buttons on both sides, you obviously have the paddle. You also have left and right click in the mouse wheel that you can see here. So you have a lot more flexibility in terms of that. And there's a DPI up and down button behind the mouse wheel. So you can change those independently as well. Once you throw in hyper shift into either of these mice, you can then obviously access a lot more potential programmability as well. Another thing that's interesting about the Basilisk Ultimate is the resistance wheel adjustment. So on the underside you'll see there's a tiny little wheel. If you roll that in one direction or the other it will adjust the feedback that you get from the mouse wheel. So it will give you more or less resistance. This is quite similar to the Logitech G502 Lightspeed which has a design in there for basically infinite scroll on the mouse wheel where it just spins and spins. It's ever so slightly different because what it does is adjusts the resistance that you're getting so the feedback wave and tactility and sort of the speed at which you can move that mouse wheel around. A nice little quirk and quite unusual also gives some good feedback from that but you also have that side to side action so there's loads of programmability in this and i just prefer the overall comfort of the basilisk ultimate and the setup of it considering they both have very similar specs basilisk ultimate is a more sensible choice in my mind plus it has that satisfying paddle button and the switch setup and the enhanced RGB lighting has much superior RGB lighting. You see the strip down the side there, below the side buttons. That's adjustable in various different zones. And obviously it works with Razer's Chroma software as well. So you can even get it to match up with a charging dock, which also has some Chroma RGB lighting on the bottom. However, there's no denying the Viper Ultimate is a fantastic mouse. It doesn't quite have the specs of the Viper 8K, which is also worth looking at. But they're both great and I really like the addition of the charging dock, although it can be a little fiddly until you get used to it. Hopefully you found this video useful. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions and be sure to check out the in-depth reviews. I'll go into in a bit more detail on things like the software controls and such. But otherwise, two great mice from Razer. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Thanks for watching. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting, hilarious, or otherwise. Take a look at these other videos that I think you might find interesting as well. And have a look at the description for links and other information you might find useful. Click that join button to see the benefits of being a member of my YouTube channel. And most importantly, have a great life.